It's time for your final winner's bracket round one matchup. Here is your G Fuel key player matchup. We have Enable taking on that role of the Envy 4, and he's going to be battling against one of the best. It's Slasher from Envy. Yeah, both of the main Envy 4s for their current rosters. You see Enable stats, they were absolutely nuts. The 1.2 on Hardpoint KD. Phase, they really excelled in Search and Destroy, where Envy struggled. You see Enable there with a 1.40. And Uplink, he was strong as well. I feel like, though, Slasher on the other side, a very tough matchup. He's a very smart player for Enable to go up against. I think this is going to be a great match with the NV Force. That is your G Fuel key player matchup. It's time to get this party started. That man with the hat, he wasn't wearing a phase jersey last time he was playing in stage one. He has been added to this lineup. And Matt, I got to ask you, after watching him throughout the group stages, how do you feel Gunless is fitting in with this phase clan? I, you know, I mean, he comes in, he has some good games in Search and Destroy. It's the mode that phase excelled in. But you know, they go three and three. You know, they have a very tough group with Ghost Gaming in there, Enigma 6 as well. Right. You know, they, I want to say, barely get in. I mean, it comes down to the last day. It's a phase team that you knew when they kind of made this change with Clay leaving, you know, enables now the main NV4. You bring in Gunless, a superstar player, it wasn't all going to click right away. I feel like the one saving grace from phase is that you saw Attach play really well in their group stage week. Welcome so you back, get, Dylan. Yeah, if you get that Attach here and then you get Gunless playing a little bit more comfortable and enable with the NV4 if he stays hot, it's a very dangerous phase team. I think I you know just a lot of questions about them because we haven't seen them in a very long time. I think the biggest concern I had was how is Enable going to perform in this new role? He's got a transition. Well, he excelled during the group stages. Gunless, though, this is a guy that was on all of our radar as a top five player in the game, if not in the top two. He slowed down a little bit early on in the group stages. Now it's time to find out, is he going back to the gunless that we saw in Atlanta, the gunless that we saw earlier in this year win MVP awards? Well, the thing with the United is they played around gunless. So you, you're, the team was set up for having gunless have success and make him have those big play moments that we saw. This team, it's more of, you know, everybody has those opportunities. He's just gonna kind of have to fit in, pick his spots. I still think Gunless a very talented player. You look at IW as an overall season. I think we'll look back and Gunless will be a top five player. I think it's just a different fit on this roster. Definitely a breakout star on the other side of the stage, though. The men I'm looking forward to matching up against Gunless. It's a duo, John and Apathy, who is going to get the best of that battle. And then it's all going to come down to JCap for me because I know Slasher is going to be there in our hard points. If JCap can do what he did in the group stages of stage one, where he's dropping 40 bombs, Envy, this is their tournament to go into a top four run. Yeah, I think Envy, look, they, they get out of the group last week. They have a very good week. You know, it's a, a weekend where a lot of people expected them to finish, you know, third, probably fourth. Now they come out top two, they have a chance to even get that number one seed on Sunday. You know, they were fantastic in hard point. It's really where they excelled. The search and destroy was pretty weak. I think, you know, they've been around the venue for the last week or so, you know, getting some series in against Optic Gaming. Probably helped them in the respawn game modes, maybe work out some of the kinks. You're going to need to see them take this game one, though. They have not been good in search and destroy like we've been talking about. They had one good day during their weekend. You need to see them take game one here against FaZe. It's so important for Envy. Absolutely, and looking at the numbers, I mean, we can't nail that point home hard enough. Envy on Scorch Hardpoint since Dallas, 73% win rate. After that, you're going down to a 40% win rate on Breakout, 30% on Precinct Uplink. When it goes to Retaliation, down to a 33%. You have to win this first hard point. You got to upset the odds and change the numbers up when you get to that uplink. And honestly, I think it's going to come down to a search and destroy. If they steal a game two, Envy has a chance. If not, FaZe Clan could roll this for another 3-0. It looks like Gunless is going to take a short pause. We'll see how that sorts out throughout the game. Matt, as you take a look at this phase team, though, talk me through the players' roles now that we've had Clayster removed and Gunless added. Well, you're going to have Attach and Zoom obviously play at a very fast pace, you know, up in your face. It's what they've done their entire COD career, and able to be that NV4 player who kind of you know, lurks in the back, goes on the rotation, holds off angles. And then I know the week we actually saw them play, Gunless was using a little bit more of the NV4, the K-Bar. You, you can run any weapon. I mean, Gunless is such a talented player. Look to see him just kind of fill gaps. Attached half health couldn't challenge, but he baits two into Gunless's crosshair. Slasher, last man standing for Envy after that initial gunfight, waits for his team. 
And now here comes the push. Envy shut down on their first one. It's FaZe 25 and counting to just two points from Envious. And I feel like FaZe is a team that we haven't really talked about over the last month or so. I mean, as soon as they make the change for Gunless, we see them play. Great, it, it just kind of goes into the back of everybody's minds. Uh, you know, this team goes home, they practice for a few weeks. All I feel like we've talked about is, you know, Luminosity, Splice, Epsilon, Optic Gaming. You know, we really have talked about FaZe that much. I mean, we talked about United a little bit more. And you know, FaZe, they definitely have the firepower to come out and put together a good weekend. Uh, I, I, this is definitely, I, I mean, I wouldn't call it a sleeper pick because you look at the talent they have on this, but definitely a sleeper pick for the finals of this event. I think this team does have the potential to get there. I mean, they've been in the top three, four times. Third place at Vegas, second place at Paris, third place at Dallas, and then in stage one, FaZe was right there on Championship Sunday. Ended up finishing third, falling just shy of the championship match. But like you said, feel like there's not enough hype around this squad quite yet. Maybe they can build some, because right now this is a blowout, 72 to eight and counting now for Envy as they finally grab the turbine, but FaZe is already set up for the hangar. I mean, their placings were great. I think the only issue that you kind of have with those placings is that when they get towards those top teams, I mean, just think back to the Paris final. I mean, they got smoked by Optic Gaming in that. Now they have some bad losses to that top echelon of teams. It's really what the phase season has been about last year and then coming into this year is they've been good enough to get there, not good enough to win. I think now they feel like they have that roster to get over the hump. And that top echelon teams, that's kind of changed as the season has progressed. A lot of new names being shown in championship matches over the last 60 days. Slasher on your screen, going for the slow wall run, just trying to pre-aim anyone that will be challenging through the doorway, Envy. Gonna get their first challenger. It's Gunless who runs in alone. A little bit of an uncoordinated push from FaZe. It's gonna come down on this 1v1 though, and Attach is gonna win it. Envy stops scoring, but they're faster on the respawn. Yeah, Envy, they, I mean, they have a ton of reinforcements coming back towards the hard point, but they never deal with Attach. The one player slides by, and then they expect Jcap to pick that kill up. Doesn't finish it off. It just buys a little bit more time here for FaZe Clan, as uh, John doing a nice job contesting. It'll be the last seven or so seconds, but Envy gets a ton of time there. It puts themselves in a position where you know they rotate early here to drill. You see they're in control of the hard point early. They had a good hold here. Now that poor start's completely erased. Looking at your numbers early on, attached. He continues to impress at nine and six. You got Gunless, the first to reach double digits. The kills being scored so fast back and forth, and Envy will come out on top of that one. John waiting for the push. He knows where the spawners are. Pre-fires makes the call out. And now they'll just drop back. Face has to come into them, and they have two ERADs waiting. After they unfortunately takes down John, but they get two kills in the process. Envy starting to come back here. It's going to be Apathy on a three street, getting back towards the hill. 25 seconds left in this hard point, but everything positive you saw from Face at the beginning of the game, I mean, uh, you know, from Hangar on, I mean, this has been dominant from Envy. So as soon as they've gotten control of these hills, Face has not been able to break. Seems like a lot of staggered pushes. Finally, they get together as a three-man unit. They're able to break on in. But Envy, you know, the damage has been done. They've chipped away at this lead, the big one that FaZe has at the beginning of this game, giving themselves an opportunity to come back here in the second half. Envy, they get hot at the right times. You remember the last year, they win the 2016 Call of Duty World League Championships. Last stage one, though, they ran into Luminosity in round one, Optic Gaming in the first round of the loser's bracket. So they finished seventh and eighth, but I don't think that placement really speaks to really the caliber of this squad. If they can turn up late in this game, they can cash in a lot more money. We'll see how far they can go because this game has been back and forth. This first bridge hard point though, Envy doesn't seem to have an answer. Yeah, it'll be phase inside of the hard point. Envy does have the spawns for Turbine. So you'd like to get control of this hill. You got at least split some time here with phase. You can't get them, you know, a big lead, but you see Zuma picks up a three piece. The rest of his teammates do fall. It is still Envy in control of that turbine side of the map, but they've given up a decent amount of time here to FaZe. See the Scarab come out. Tatch just going to search for players on Envy. It's Enable oh, already. Wow. Through three kills there for Enable. Envy has no spawns, Matt. Uh, he's going to push on the, all the way through. It is Enable and Zuma early on the rotation. Big kills from Enable going to break this turbine side of the map, and that is an awful thing to see if you're an Envious fan. And I was going to point it out on the mini-map five seconds before that triple kill. You saw three players kind of distracting down low at the corner of bridge. Enable runs Sky Bridge, and then he just sneaks in behind the enemy lights. Doesn't shoot the first player he sees. Instead, he lines up the double and then finds the third. And FaZe, 
Well, they're making the most of this one. Zuma is going to pick up every last second unless Envy decides to go for one more push. Attach and Zuma went huge there. So Clay and Gunless both fall. You have players from the top side and the bottom side of your minimap pushing in towards that turbine hardpoint. Zuma and Attach lock it down for FaZe Clan. That's going to buy them another 30 seconds on that hill. So two kills from Zuma, two kills from Attach have blown this game open in FaZe's favor. Currently watching my wife's favorite player attach. Such a nice man, and this guy has some nasty gun skill. There he is with two quick ones, 18 and 10, looking for number 19. And Nabel is going to steal the kill, but nice teamwork from FaZe to break the hangar once again. Attach calls out three players. He knows where Envy's spawning, and he's going to come in and challenge. Wins one, gets help from Enable on the other. What a hold so far from Attach, and this could be the game right here, Matt. And this is an envious team that in their group week, they looked lights out in hardpoint. The only one that gave them any issues was Optic Gaming, and FaZe is beating the hell out of them here in game number one. 242 and counting to 87. The streak's gonna come down from Attach. Get them all! In here. I mean, you see the players on Envy not even moving anymore. One in a contest, but that'll be all. It'll be 250 to 87 in favor of FaZe Clan against Envy in map number one. And as we mentioned before the game, that was Envious's best hard point in this series. They had a 73% win rate on it. Their best hard point overall is breakout, but you're not gonna see this. Game number four will be retaliation. So going in the hole this early could be devastating for Envious. Now I feel like more than ever, there's a ton of pressure coming into the search. It's just the pacing looks so much better from FaZe Clan. And now, when they had Clay, obviously, he's still a very talented team. They still always kind of made it to your top fours and whatnot. But with Gunless now on there, he just plays at a faster pace than Clay. Like, I yeah. feel like a lot of the issues they had is because you had Enable and Clay both playing a little bit slower. Then you just have Attach and Zuma pushing up. And you obviously don't have a lot of players there to trade that out. I mean, you have two players playing all the way in the back. Now that you put Gunless in this lineup, you have three players who are playing very aggressive. You see, it makes it a lot easier for Attach to play. And then when it's not Attach, maybe it's Zuma who's picking up those kills. Eerily reminiscent of AW Phase Clan. I was gonna say, it's the old phase back. Fast and furious, they catch you off guard before you're able to set up. A guy who's able to just thrive in that scenario, Slasher, once they're set up, he could just pick you off at range for days. Never got an opportunity. They shut him down on this map in particular. Yeah, I mean, when you're not able to get any control, it's very difficult. I mean, the little bit of time we saw Envy take, they got to Hangar early. Once they got that early control, they were able to lock it down. Same over by Drill. But once they got broken, I mean, their breaks, they were never able to force the engagements back inside of the hill. It is FaZe, completely dominated game number one. Breakout, one of the least practiced of the game modes. And we'll see who is better prepared coming into this second game. Envious, you looked at what happened in group stages. They looked incredible throughout all of their hard points. Their uplink was pretty strong. Their search and destroy, it was awful until the end of day two. I think this is the game mode where you saw FaZe really clicked the most during their group week. So looks like it's going to form to be a scary series for Envious. You need to put a win on the board here in SND. You look at Uplink. It's a game mode that FaZe has been pretty good at, and Gunless especially. I mean, he excels in that game mode. You know, highlight play after highlight play you can think of throughout the year with E United. I think uh, this is a FaZe team that comes out in this first series, Chris. I really think they're trying to make a statement. And, you know, going 3-3 three and three in their group week, they didn't look too hot. A lot of people probably question them. I mean, Clay's a fan favorite. Do have the decision you bring in gunless or not? Is it going to work out? I think they're really trying to prove people wrong here. You look back at Anaheim, phase top 13. 13th to 16th is their final placement from that open bracket. They knew they were on the outs with Clay, and that man right there, gunless, he didn't even play in Anaheim. He refused to stay on his team at United. He waited for the opportunity, knowing what's on the line here with our $500,000 playoffs, knowing that we have a $1.5 million tournament. He felt like one of the best homes for him could be on FaZe. He sits one out. Will it pay off? Well, I mean, look, FaZe tries to make changes before Anaheim, just doesn't work out. I think once you kind of entertain the idea, at least publicly with your teammates about making a change, and then you don't, I don't think there's really a, a chance of going back to play well. So I think that's really what you saw happen with FaZe in Anaheim. I really wouldn't put too much stock in that performance. Clearly these guys are much more talented than what that result says. A lot of predictions didn't even have Envy in the top eight playing at the playoffs. A lot of people thought that it would be Epsilon here instead. So Envy trying to continue to prove everyone wrong including the numbers in this one. Will they be able to pull off the upset and search and destroy? FaZe is undefeated in their two attempts on this map. It's a really slow start to the search and destroy round as you saw FaZe playing all the way in the back towards their spawn. 
Envy was getting a little bit confused, right? They're looking over by A. They have somebody looking over towards that staircase. They see nobody pass. Now they know they've gotten onto the site. It's going to be Apathy coming out, picking up one. John with another. They've and that's going to be the power duo. You got to keep your eyes on Apathy and John. Can they put the pressure on phase? You got Slasher grabbing one. Down low is attached, and he is going to be wiped up. Nice start here for Envy after it looked like FaZe was going to be in control. Yeah, just a lot of aggression there from Envy. You know, they, they know where FaZe is instead of, you know, turning it into a game where Envy, I mean, they haven't excelled at kind of playing a strategic slow game. You know, they start to play well Saturday during their group week. It's really where they just try to move around as a four-person unit. You know, right there, they knew where FaZe was. They make an attack. They go right up the stairs as a unit. They take them out. Enable last man standing, Slasher picked up, attached, and then enable to go 2-0. and oh. So keep your eyes on this player. He's the camo player for Envious. Camo, it can win you a full round of search and destroy. And also give you an opportunity to go for a streak. Slasher with the Envy 4 is going to post up. He is going to be waiting for someone to peak loading. As Envy is going to take their time before choosing a bomb site. So working the bomb up the middle of the map here. You're just trying to gain information if you're Envious. And you have Slasher. Seeing if anybody kind of runs out towards that mid-map. Cap with the K-bar in his hands, moving up. I think he saw the player in the window here. So Cap's trying to sneak his way closer, wait for Slasher, and then they'll try and pinch together. And as Cap rechecks the window, that player is gone. Apathy was taking some damage, has to retreat, and Envy is making their way to the top B site. Yeah, there's only 35 seconds left. They got to get Cap on bomb here right away and get it down. And they had Zuma playing it up in top window with an ERAD. You're like, why would you play that position? He's just trying to gain information, see where you know, Envious is stacking. As soon as he sees one player, he backs all the way down, doesn't want to get challenged. And the bomb will go down. 4v4 situation. Ooh. It's going to be Cap picking up first blood. But he's quickly traded out. John with another. It's going to be very difficult for FaZe to get back on the site. A nice kill there from Enable. Enable no lighting it up. And nobody from Envy wants to jump out and challenge us because they know they have Gunless in the corner with the Envy 4 as well. So. Buys Enable a little bit of time, but this will be another round that should go in favor to Envy. And let's go, let's go. It's huge, Matt, one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, and John is going to get outgunned, outplayed. You can't lose that round if you're Envy. I mean, they're just so poorly played. I mean, they let Gunless go all the way by. He's so weak. Where is that second player to finish him off? I mean, instead of hiding in a corner, playing the clock, I mean, I get you want to do that. And obviously, you know, it's a great tactic in Search and Destroy we see all the time. You know, you know the player has to go to the bomb, but... Such terrible timing for John. He wants to jump up and check and see if Gunless ran down the stairs. Instead, Gunless re-challenges, slides underneath him, and picks up the kill. John with the NV4 in hand in that previous round. Not something we always see. We'll see if that continues into round number three. Envy back on defense. It's phase on the attack with Gunless, your bomb carrier. That's exactly why you get a player like Gunless. He can make things like that happen in a round where no, FaZe Clan has no business winning. Envy has the man advantage. The bomb down, about 12 seconds left. He pulls a magical play to win the 1v2. And I think Enable deserves credit for getting that second pick. That's what gave FaZe the opportunity. On to round number three, though. 30 seconds burn off the clock, and you can see there's three players stacked up around the showers. Player number one, Zuma, goes back to his deck. So it's Apathy in a 1v2 nearby. He's got Attach. And I believe that's Gunless right next to him. Yeah, and John is watching to make sure Apathy doesn't get pushed from the outside. And then as soon as the bomb goes down, you should see Apathy push in. And be an easy kill there for App. is attached, probably gets tagged up by John. And then Apathy finishes him off. The bomb does go down, though. Uh-oh. Here comes the Scarab. Going to get Apathy weak. Where is the trade, though, for FaZe? They don't want to push in because they know Envy has that man advantage. And, of course, they have two players on that deck. Slasher with the perfect flank is going to get too easy. Make it three. Slasher can't find Zuma, so there's still a chance for FaZe. Apathy immediately jumps on the bomb. Jcap just has to survive. Winning that gunfight will seal the deal. Envy taking the lead here in Search and Destroy early on. If you're going to struggle in a game mode, make it Search, but... Breakout, pulling that for map number two, I think this is a bit of a blessing. Yeah, I mean, even if Cap doesn't win this gunfight, Probably still get the defuse off in time. Kazuma's probably, obviously, he's very weak. Probably scared after he jumps off a bomb, finishes him off with one shot. Probably backs down for a quick second. It's another round win, though, for Envy. Such a crucial map for them. They lose that first hard point. Their strongest game mode during their group stage week. Now going into game mode number two, map number two, Search and Destroy. Their weakest game mode, they need to get a win here. They don't get a win here. Very likely that phase closes this series out pretty quick. And that's all because they lost that first hard point, their best game mode. J-Cap 
Looking to pick up first blood. Slasher is somehow able to get the drop on attach. And now we have Gunless trading out the kill. Slasher continues to impress. Back-to-back -back rounds with two pieces. John is going to win the fight down low, and it all comes down to J-Cap versus Enable. Battle of the Captains here. Cap will get bombed down. See Enable very far away. Opposite side of the map, so see the route that both these players take is Cap rotates out towards Cell Block. Enable's playing this very slow. But, I mean, with the NV4 in his hands, I mean, he picks up this kill. Can he get very close to Cap? Uh-oh. Cap spots him first and a nice hover shot. Envy's up 3-1. It's a big 1v1 win there from J-Cap. Obviously don't want to give another kill to Enable. He's working towards active camo. And just think of how different this round is if Attach has a few extra bullets and can finish off Slasher in that first gunfight. Slasher then doesn't find the second kill. Envy never has the man advantage. And this is FaZe's round. Instead, the patient play from Envy is causing problems for FaZe Clan, and you are going to see FaZe back on the attack. They went showers last time. They tried to overwatch a player from their own deck. Didn't work out. Slasher on the flank caused them problems. This time, all four members sticking together, and FaZe is going to be making a hit on B. Envy has left this site pretty wide open the entire time. Seems like they're just kind of playing for retakes. You see Cap in the middle of the map looking over. Stairs knows at least two players have crossed, but you know, FaZe, now as soon as they see three, three on the flank here, they should push all the way through and see the bomb starting to move up closer towards that site. A lot of gun engagements going down. Oh, two no. wins there for Enable. Gunless wins one on the other side. And I couldn't tell, but I think Apathy was focused on picking up Slasher's NV4. He goes out a little bit too far to the left, and it's an easy pick. And there is Gunless just waiting patiently, knows that Captain Cap is going to make a move. Catches him out with the E-Rad. Yeah, I mean, Cap doesn't know where Gunless is. I probably think he wrapped back inside of the building to go look over Enable there, but he's still playing on the site. It's an easy gunfight there for Gunless. And you do have Enable with his active camo already, so we'll have to pay attention whether he uses this payload ability, you know, during one of these next few rounds. You know, I, I think you hold on to it. This looks like a game that's going to go down to the wire. I think you definitely want that active camo late. Uh-oh. Enable spots at least Apathy. Shots coming his way, and J-Cap is going to drop his teammate, John. So you're playing four on three. Envy gives you a freebie. Don't know what happened there. We'll have to find that out after the game. Attach turns his back. Runs back towards his teammate. Uh, right there, though, Gunlow is able to trade it out. So now, with only two players alive, Envy, they're forced to rotate all the way back here. 45 seconds left. They're going to have enough time to you know, get bombed down here quickly. They've been spotted, though and Cap knows it. So he's going to jump up and challenge. This happened three rounds ago. Here it is again. Zuma gets out with his life, and time is burning from this clock for Envious. Yeah, it's all, all Zuma's job there is just stay alive, and he backs all the way out. It forces a challenge coming in from Apathy. Cap able to win one, not going to get another kill. It'll be faced, tying it up at three rounds apiece. Tough position for Envy once they committed on this initial engagement on Zuma. The round was basically over. Nice job by Zuma to survive. And there you see the team shot on J-Cap. Once again, the final player. We're all tied up. Two straight rounds for FaZe. Can they make it three? Now a FaZe on offense. I know you think uh, active camo, you would invest it into a round on the offensive end. 3-3. Three, three. I mean, even if you were to lose this round, and you lose the next two rounds, you still, and you're going to get another offensive round in. So. I think he probably saved the camo for one of the next, uh, you know, maybe this offense or the next offensive round. And you have to think Slasher spots all four when he goes flying up and above. The grenades will give away the location of several players, and John uses the FTL, but unfortunately can't convert it into any kills. J-Cap sliding in, Zuma's waiting for the trade. Now it's Apathy's turn. Can he get both? He got one, looking for the second. There's cover to the right. Two on two here, attached and enable for FaZe. Slasher and Apathy still up for Envy and Slasher. He's got camo. He will be able to save that for later as Apathy helps pick up the final kill. Some nice kills by Apathy there. John gets the FTL use across that gap. Closes the distance between him and the FaZe players fast. Was not able to pick up a kill, but you know, J-Cap sliding through, picking up one. Apathy with a nice angle from side stairs in towards that back doorway. Able to take out one more.
Envious looking a much better here in Search and Destroy during the playoffs than they did during the regular They've been so game. streaky in this game, though. Jump up 3-1, then they let you tie it up 3-3. They gotta build a lead here. And we'll see what Slasher can do. The NV4 player overwatching his teammates, forcing Attach to back down. That is gonna give the showers to Envious. And here comes the challenge. Attach is only able to get one. Slasher and John all over the kill feed enabled the last one up, and he is gonna somehow win this. Break it down for me, Matt. What just happened to close out that round? Yeah, enable all three players lined up for him here. Two players. What? I, I was gonna say, when they challenged, so when they challenged Attach, both of those players on Envy were body stacked, and they get both get very weak. Enable slides out. You see how many bullets he puts on them? Not many to finish off the first two. The last player has no idea where the other two guys are getting shot from. It's a big clutch there from a naval. Wow, one versus three. He's over double digits at 11 and five. A naval doing work to give Envy the tie. Or excuse me, phase the tie. We'll see what's gonna happen in this next round as it is phase on the attack. Envy, they've spotted the push once again. Last time they didn't handle it well. Apathy bailed him out this time around. We'll see who draws first blood. Attach is watching the flank. Here comes Envy, spots two. Unfortunately, after the grenade, J-Cap's gonna win the fight. There's no reason for Attach to fight that initially. I mean, he doesn't have a lot of teammate support there. Let's see Zuma. Enable's gonna lay down there. Zuma trying to get back all the way through Cave. He just needed his health first, pinned down by Slasher. Not gonna be able to do much in this situation with the ERAD from a distance, but now that the players are pushing, might be able to make something happen, but it's a round win that I think Attach needs to back down there. There's no reason to push in a cave right away. I mean, even if you get that one on the outside, you're gonna get traded out pretty quick. Gives Envy the man advantage at the beginning. They just flood in towards that graveyard. And now Envy is one map away from tying this series, one round, round away, Yeah. tying this series up. Can they do it? We're about to find out. That camo still available for both Slasher as well as Enable from FaZe. Do you invest it here if you're the FaZe Clan? I mean, I, I think you do. I mean, you would hate to lose the game without ever getting the camo used, so I think you use it, try and force the round 11. I think the bigger question is, does Slasher use it this round? And then if you use it and you don't win it, you know, th then you're kind of in a tough spot if you're Envy, but now you have that first blood. And they know where the remaining well. two players are. They were scouted out by Apathy. And Enable, he is gonna survive with his life. Scarab in his back pocket as well. Score streak is available. But you need your gun out for this fight. Running in, it's a two on two. Make it a one on two. Enable's gonna find caps, and now it's Slasher who pops his own camo. Enable pre firing. But the camo Slasher will get it done. Envy, they pull off a much needed victory here in Search and Destroy. One that statistically all odds were up against them. Got dangerous there for a second in that final round. Thought Enable is gonna pull some magic out again, clutching another 1v3, but it is Envy bouncing back after game number one, winning Search and Destroy to tie the series up. What a game, what a series, saving best for last here on day number one, and we have so many great games coming across the next two days. Matt, coming into this, what was your prediction? Was this a phase 3-0? Did you see it going to a game five? Uh, I think the series uh, coming in was gonna be very close. I uh, you know coming in, I know I only saw phase during their group weeks. So that's all I really have to judge on them. And I wasn't too impressed with them. I was very impressed with what we saw from Envy you know, just last week. So I yeah. expected Envy to not really drop off too heavy. I expected phase to come in a little bit better. Series is kind of going the way I expected it. Envious is trying to bounce back from a career low placing at the Anaheim Open. They have to take a big step forward in game number three. Uplink Precinct is coming up next. You don't want to miss it. We'll see. Can FaZe take the lead or will be Envy with the edge?
We are all tied up. This is the final match. Your winner's bracket round one battle. Envious has just taken Search and Destroy on Breakout. Now we'll see, can they take the lead with a victory on Precinct Uplink? They're going up against a tough phase squad that can really rattle, rattle some points up on the scoreboard, Matt. Yeah, phase was great in their first respawn game mode and the hard point, expect them to bring that firepower here in a Precinct Uplink. I think Envy you know, needs, needs a win here, Chris. You know, they got the win in Search and Destroy. You go to another hard point. Envy was great in the game mode, but you know, they showed you know, in their group play week, they showed nothing in game number one of this series, though, that would seem likely that they would be able to hang with this phase roster. You want to get it back to another Search and Destroy? I mean, ideally, you'd love to take these next two maps if you're Envy, obviously. Yeah, but, just win it in four. But, but I feel like the respawns are going to be tough for them against this FaZe Clan team. FaZe has looked really tough, especially in that first hard point. But my question is, who is going to have the best performance on this game type in general today? Classic, he is topping everybody so far on day number one with the 35 bomb he dropped on Precinct. I'm just hoping for another good game. I don't know enough about either of these teams yet. FaZe, of course, adding in a new player, and Envy, they have been all over the map with their placings throughout 2017. Yeah, I think on the side of FaZe, you look at Gunless, see how he plays here in the uplink, think he needs to be a big player, you know, in and around the drone, slaying up in the NVS space. On the side of Envy, I think uh, JCAM needs to show up. I think in Infinite Warfare, more than any other COD game in the past, you cannot get away with one player not bringing it in the slaying department. Feel like Cap needs to bring it here. Cap was huge in the search and destroys for him. Won some big 1v1s. What will go down here on Precinct Uplink? Matt, I have to ask you though, when it comes to the roles, is Gunless going to be running the camo like he did on E United when it comes to this game type in particular? Uh, we've seen FaZe actually kind of move the payloads around. So you saw Enable with it in search and destroy. Now you see Gunless with it here in Uplink. I think it's a wise decision. Gunless has made some fantastic plays with active camo throughout the year. Gunless gets two opening kills, but John and Slasher in the feed to trade out. Here comes the next push from FaZe, and Slasher is going to be able to deal with it. So four down from FaZe early on. Envy is going to be setting up first as Slasher is working with Apathy for top control. Yeah, I mean, Apathy, uh, Apathy and Slasher, they just want to control this top side of the map where this cat statue is. It just gives a great angle for Slasher to look in towards the drone in case FaZe is putting pressure on that. And watch the middle cut so FaZe can't put a lot of pressure on the envious base. So, very nice spot for Slasher to lock down with the NV4. Now that Envy's picked up some kills, you see him move up a little bit, but nobody packed to get this drone. Suzuma inside for FaZe. It's able to hold down this center area. And, you know, FaZe can turn this potentially into points, Chris, because you still have Slasher over that towards that top side of the map. If he doesn't rotate back or his teammates don't pick up kills, it'll be FaZe going on a fast break. Apathy, though, just cleared three players before falling to enable, and Slasher is going to find his fourth in a row. Early on, it is Envy winning these slaying battles. JCap is without a kill and will not be able to score the opening point. Nice hold. Zuma with some big stops in the first minute and a half. We'll see what he can do on the attack. You've got two lead blockers, player number two, player number four. That's Attach and Gunless on your mini-map. At the top, just holding the spawns and making sure that Envy doesn't get behind them is Enable. Yeah, watch out for Enable, though, on the mini-map. You see the drone being brought down towards this bottom side. But it looks like they're going to let it reset. They're going to try and play for kills. And you see Enable, he's wrapped all the way through this mid-map. Look to see him try and pick up some kills. And as soon as they go in FaZe's favor, he's going to pick the drone up. Now he knows he has Gunless in support here down towards this bottom side. See if he can get the one-point throw off. And he is waiting on just one more player. There he is, Zuma, right behind Enable if things go sour. Zuma distracting, picks up the kill on JCap. Enable's been spotted, but Zuma has cleared the way, and he's going to dish this one off to Gunless, who is just 50 points away from the Trinity. They want him to get these score streaks in phase. They are playing so cerebrally. Yeah, it was Gunless who made that play happen. He picks up the two-piece. Enable dances around with the drone, and it allows Zuma to come all the way on a flank. Another pass forward here to Gunless. Be a two-point play. Gunless earning full streaks as well. We talked about it, and I mentioned Cap needed to show up here in game number three, starting off one and eight. Not the way to do it. You got a fully loaded gunless sitting in your spawn. And now he's going to go hunting, calls it out. J-Cap's going to spot him, put an end to his streak. But gunless is going to put more kills in that feed. Enable finds two, gunless finds the third, and Zuma will top it off. All four down for Envy, but look at that drone. It is all the way back in the phase bait, slowly moving forward in the hands of Zuma, and he's just going to set it down on the reset point, looking for some kills of his own. Finds John, number three, scored in a row. 
Zuma's been the man so far for phase 11 and 5, leading the charge at double positive. Yeah, they are finally able to end Gunnels' streak at six kills. And see the drone again trying to go towards that top side. They would have had Zuma wrapping around through the bottom. Now they have a Tatch here to try and help Gunless. Maybe they settle for the one point play. So it looks like over the top of the building, oh. it'll be an interception there from John. So a nice pickoff from John. And Envy will run this out of their base, trying to get forward because they need to. I mean, they have not been able to create any offense. It's hard right now when you got Cap at 1 and 11. Yeah, I just saw him lose another gunfight to enable there. Cap is having a really rough time, and that's going to be the difference maker in your scoreboard so far. You have to think, if he starts to heat up, if Slasher and John continue playing the way they do, Envy has a chance. If not, this could be a blowout. Gunless is going to open it up with a two kill on the bombardment. And now you're going to see Attach taking his time, knowing Envy is setting up for the reset. He goes for the dunk. He's going to be on the backstab. His two teammates just have to hold their ground. Some team kills, though. A double team kill. Jcap takes down John, and then Slasher takes down Jcap. Everything is falling apart for Envy in the first half. It's uh, not going well for Envy. It's uh, Cap with a team kill. Slasher with a team kill. You see the pinch coming in from Attach. Apathy is able to pick it up, but another team kill comes out. Apathy takes out John. So it looks like it'll be a one-point play that'll go off from Gunless. This has been an ugly first half for Envy. Uh, you know, they have not gone on offense at all. A lot of team kills. It's just been super sloppy here from Envy and Uplink. FaZe is playing 5v3, basically. Sometimes 6v2. Gunless finds two as Envy is trying to push forward. Jcap knows this is not going to be a points push. They got to get the kills early. And he jumps right over Enable, who punishes. Attach going to pad the stats a little bit as the half comes to an end. Good first half for this FaZe Clan, especially Zuma, who is leading the charge in most of these fights. Envy, just too many mistakes. And now you have to wonder, with the score what it is coming into the second half, will they be able to mount the comeback? You can see the frustration on Jcap's face. FaZe, though, has looked fantastic in the respawn game modes against Envy. Can Envy bounce back in the second half? You don't even need an explosion from Cap. You just need him not to hurt you that bad and you can maybe put some points on the board. Zuma and Gunless coming in at 13 and 10, 16 and 9 after that death from Gunless. But here comes your first scoring attempt of the second half. Attach has two players to beat, just dancing around. He might try and loop this back up after Enable gets the double. Jcap, the only player in position. He's going to get tagged in the back by, by Gunless, and this is another dunk coming through. 30 seconds, that's all it took. Yeah, and I really love the drone movement by the players of FaZe. You know, they're wrapping it towards one side, getting players moving into their teammates, able to you know, result in some easy kills, and now Attach working towards four streaks of his own. It's going to be able to pick up the Trinity Rockets there. Attach on a five streak, has overdrive. Going to call in the Trinity Rocket. As right now, it just seems like FaZe is just trying to add insult to injury here. They're just trying to blow the doors off of Envy. As now Envy is trapped in their own base. Here comes Gunless. Two-point play comes through. It'll be 11 to nothing in favor of FaZe Clan here. So, I mean, Envy has not really gotten any scoring opportunities. They haven't really touched a drone. I mean, they've been struggling to make it out of their own base. It's been a... Uh, Really, really poor uplink game here from Envy. It took a minute and 20, but Envy is finally out of their base. They're out of the spawn trap. An even fight once again. As we say, it's Attach and Gunless paving the way for FaZe Clan once again. And you have to look at the payloads. Attach, he's had his overdrive forever. Gunless, he had camo when Slash was at 50% of the way there. They're getting more kills. They're getting more scores. The payloads, they are going to convert these into points. Azuma. He's just going to toss the drone for a bit, trying to bait that out. Knows there's two players around the corner. Callouts were made earlier. FaZe on the back foot for now. Can Envy push forward? Yeah, if you're Envy, I mean, look, you try and put some points on the board here towards the end of this game, but you're really looking at trying to get... Now, your gun's shooting hot going into the hard point. It's a nice sliding kill there from Apathy. The drone drop behind him. There'll be two kills from Zuma. Stops the push in its track, but... If you're Envy, just got to kind of you know, rally everybody here towards the end of this game, try and put some points on the board, get some confidence in the way you're playing going into that next hard point. Because right now, I mean, 11 to nothing. They would need a lot, of, a lot of help to come back here in the uplink. In other titles, when we see a team that thinks this game or that round is officially over, they'll just stall it out, even put the controllers down or the keyboards down for a moment and just regroup. 
I don't think I've ever seen anything like that here in Call of Duty. But when you were a coach, Matt, with the Complexity team, did you ever talk to the guys and just say, all right, this map is over, but let, let's figure out, let's start to heat up for the next one? Yeah, I mean, sometimes you would just uh, stall it out in between games. You know, a team gets hot, right? Nope. Ace takes a, you know, an extended break. They say he can't go on one. He just walks away, kind of regroup a little bit, and then you're able to kind of come to your senses. But I think uh, Envy, you know, you're putting on some points here towards the end. You're getting Cat playing better in the second half. I think you got to take those positives going into this next game. Envy is four dunks away from tying this one up. We should make it known that this game isn't officially over until that final second ticks off the clock. But all things are pointing towards a phase victory. Here comes another push. Attach yet to pop that overdrive. Is just going to keep that in his back pocket for later. J-Cap with the two-piece and now Drone. And he's got a teammate Apathy leading the charge. Slasher is here as well with the NV4. Up it goes, and J-Cap will put in point number four. So it's two for Apathy, one for John, one for J-Cap. We just need one from Slasher. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's Envy putting on some points, but they're not able to rally those into scores like we saw FaZe do in the first half. And I think when you're down by this much with only a minute to go, you got to rally those points if you're going to make this comeback. Because now, look, Gunless is going to pop camo. Guaranteed so dunk. Most likely be a dunk, walks right in. It's going to hold on to his life as well with the opportunity to pick up some kills inside of the envious base. But Ready for the overdrive, Matt? It's yeah, I mean, coming right now. Yeah, I mean, Attach has it. You may as well use it here. You got four defenders up. Attach is just going to run out the clock, baiting them forward. Does he go now? You got a lead blocker and enable. And enable is going to get shut down by John without hitting a single bullet. Attach will also fall. John, you look at his numbers from this game, he's going to finish positive. 26 and 23. Slasher's back to even. Awful game for J-Cap, who started off 1 and 10. And Apathy's going to finish negative 7. Cap brings it back, though, in the second half. You know, it's a tough game for him, but he starts to play much better in the second half. Gunless with a dominant performance, though. I mean, nine points to his name, 30 kills as well. You see what the guy brings to the table in uplink as FaZe, with another dominant respawn map against Envious, takes the lead in the series 2-1. to one. FaZe wasn't greedy. They didn't run up the score as much as they could have, but they, they seem to take the foot off the gas a little bit towards the end. But now you have to put the foot on the throat, Matt. Can you finish it here in a game number four? Can you lock up a retaliation hard point and move on to winner's bracket round two? Yeah, you got to feel really confident if you're FaZe Clan going into this next map. You know, retaliation, you know, you can get enable going with the NV4. You saw Gunless using the NV4 an extended period there on Precinct Uplink, so you get him some practice with it. That was the one thing that we saw during their week where we were all kind of questioning. I know Gunless running a little bit more of the NV4. So good with the ERAD and the K-Bar in his hands. You saw him put it to good use there on Precinct. Expect him to go with the same weapon there on Retaliation. If you're the manager of this squad, what do you want? Gunless to be running. Uh, look, I want the team to just play as comfortable as they can. I think if that's the easiest way, I mean, you're so kind of time bid with champs so close. Like, if that's the easiest way you can make things work with him kind of coming in, I don't want to say like taking like a, you know, an enable role in the sense that enable kind of takes play spot. Now, Gunless is doing a lot of stuff with the K bar and the NV4 and can mix some of his E rad play into question. I think, look, with Champ so close, you, you make this roster, you figure out the best way to get wins, and you figure it out quick, and you just really hammer down you know, that type of play style. I think, uh, you know, trying to experiment with a lot of things with not much time left in the season, uh, it's not the best way to go about it. Taking a look at the numbers here, historically, Envy is 4-8 and eight on Retaliation Hardpoint, but FaZe, since adding Gunless, they're 0 for 2. They didn't win either of their retaliations during the group stages. So if you're Envy, you know you watch these games leading up to today. You've practiced. Let's see if they have an answer for what FaZe will be bringing to the table. And if FaZe is going to show us anything new this time around. I do remember in one of those FaZe losses during their group week, they were up by about 100 or so. Yeah. They end up blowing the game. I don't know if it was to Enigma 6 or Ghost Gaming. Uh, I believe it was to Ghost. But they're able to make that comeback, I think, towards the end of that game. and. No, I think if you let FaZe go up uh, 100, a lot like map number one, I don't see them letting that lead up yet again. I think this is going to be a game where FaZe comes in trying to blow the drawers off of Envy again. Envy, you need a good game from Cap. You need a good game from Slasher here on Retaliation. Retaliation is the only map of the four for Hardpoint that FaZe has a losing record. 
What do they have left in the tank going up against a squad that has consistently finished top three this year? FaZe Clan, a threat in this tournament without a doubt, but never count out the boys in blue. Apathy doing the fist bumps. Here they come. Map is loading up and they are getting ready to go. Matt, as the map loads, I gotta ask you, one player from Envy. Cap, of course, we have to highlight him not going negative. But is there a superstar on this squad? Is there one player that can take over this game? Yeah, it's gotta be Slasher. I think Slasher has the ability to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best you know, in terms of Envy 4 play. He needs to show it on this map. Needs to be that dominant AR presence. When he is, that makes Apathy in J Camp in John's life so much easier. Slasher needs to go big here on Retaliation. A map that is, you know, heavily favored towards long range NV4 players. Looking forward to that Enable versus Slasher battle. Keep your eyes on both of these players throughout the game. Enable, he's going to be that red arrow number three in the top left Slasher. He's blue arrow number six. First blood, it's going to go to Apathy with his NV4 as he picks off Attach. There's a player waiting and a two man hit coming from Envy. Will they get pinched from the side? A little bit of a team shot is going to slow him down, but both players survive, and now they're into the hard point. Envy wins the first gunfight. They're going to pick up your first 10 seconds. they got 35 more to score here. Yeah, Envy trying to push all the way through. Bridge trying to just pinch here on the FaZe Clan, spawn him out. They don't need to, though. FaZe plays it a little slower at the beginning. They're going to wait and try and hit this as a unit, but Slasher with one. Zuma Ooh. and Gunless, though, picking up kills for FaZe. They're getting back towards the hill. That'll be two kills for Gunless. Three. Make it three. But the hill still in control of Envy here at the beginning, getting some nice time. Nice shots from JCap and Apathy. Enable couldn't even get that grenade off. Envy, in your opening 60 seconds, will be walking away with 32 points. Now it comes down for the fight of market. Player number six versus one. It was Slasher going up against Zuma. Zuma wins that gunfight, so no pinch coming in. Attach knows everyone is going to be flooding from the front. Yeah, and Enable and Attach getting off to a rough start for FaZe. Talked about the Slasher, how he has to be the dominant AR presence for Envy. Enable's the one who's trying to do it for FaZe Clan. And I, I, on a map like this, if Slasher and JCap with the NV4 can you know, cause a lot of problems for FaZe Clan, then we're going to see a game five. And Envy has done a fantastic job rotating towards lower street. They're going to get a ton of time here. It looks like FaZe, they're just trying to hold on to these spawns for Cathedral, but it's going to be Envy pushing all the way through. John there with Cap. So Cap's inside of the hill. He's able to pick up one, but John and Slasher push all the way through. They're able to pick up some kills. This is going to be a good time for Cathedral on Envy. They should be able to hold Cathedral as well. And just in a game mode where you thought that FaZe would just kind of run away with him. I mean, they've been so good in the respawns. Envy is now up huge here at the beginning of Retaliation. And they could be in an even better position. JCap was a kill and a half away from unlocking score streaks. He's cut down on that 1v1 outside of Bike Shop. Slasher, though, just going to work 10 and 3. More than triple positive, looking for more. No one peeking their head out against his NV4. Meanwhile, Apathy on the flank. Going to find Zuma. Knows the spawns, waiting for him to cross the bridge. Unfortunately, Gunless goes up and over. Gunless comes surging forward, a Scarab team kill coming in. How many has that been throughout this series for Team Envious? Yeah, but Envy is going clutch here on Cathedral. It is Slasher, John, and Apathy able to hold on as they will take the last 20 or so seconds. You see Slasher on a five streak pushing this forward. He's trying to tag one player up, then get the assist, get very close towards that Trinity rocket. Spots one. Oh, it's going to be a kill there for Slasher. That is huge because that actually unlocks the Trinity. And it is Envy up 123 to 10 here against FaZe. And oh! uh, Enable is Enable's getting crushed on this map, Chris. I mean, yeah, right we... there, John is weak. Enable has all the time in the world to put the shots in. Just not going well for him here on Retaliation. Johnny Boy is right there with Slasher. We talked about Slasher's 10 and 3 a moment ago. John 10 and 3 currently. And finally, Slasher's spree will be cut to an end. John will fall at the hands of Attach, and that's a big break here from FaZe Clan. Envy, though, already 144 to just 18 points now and counting for FaZe Clan. And if you're Envy, you have such a big lead, you can play for the rest of this time, because that's just going to force FaZe in the later half of the game to you know, press the issue on some hills they probably wouldn't like to. Now you get the last 20 so seconds here. I mean, they're going to have to play for you know, all of Bridge. They're going to have to play for all of the market. They can't rotate to Cathedral and Broken early. Now, if you're Envy, you take advantage of the fact that you can play for a lot of this you know, garbage time, so to speak, on these hills. 
and just build that lead out even further. Final hill on this rotation, Enable sitting at just three kills. He's got to be the difference maker in the second half. You got to start winning some more gunfights. Slasher continues to destroy, currently on a three streak. Score streaks in his back pocket for the next time we go to Cathedral as well. And it's going to be Envy winning the fight in the hallway. They should be able to continue scoring. There's one player missing. It was Zuma. And Apathy has been all over Zuma, either on the flanks or knowing what Zuma is trying to hit him from behind. This game is going to be over quick. Envy is just dominating FaZe Clan here on Retaliation. We mentioned it. FaZe was 0-2 during their group play week on this map but you didn't expect them to come out this flat in game number four, especially with such strong performances in the first hard point, you know, 100 point clubbing Envy, then in the uplink there, you know, battering them. You know, it just shows a lot about you know, Envy as a team, right? They're able to battle back, such a resilient squad. You know, a lot of people thought you know, this team may end up making some changes here during the year. They stand pat with this roster because they believed in it. They're showing up big here in a game four against FaZe as Jcap in the hill. Picks up yet another kill for Envy. One of the most storied teams in Call of Duty franchise history. Let's go ahead and crank up our headsets with Team Envious. Tom Ingle is Warren. Good hit it. Nice Got him. Oh, one more, one more. Tommy. Nice. nice. Good trace. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well unable to. This side, this side, bus weak. This side, bus weak. He's weak. I'm telling you. You want to use a Trinity here? We no, 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 no. Behind that car. Oh, car. He's five. big. He's big behind that car. Oh, actually, yeah. He's one shot. He's one shot. You have to go. They're dead. One more there. They're in there. One more there. One shot behind the van. I have streaks again also. We just got to rotate. Whoa, 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 let's go, rotate. baby. Three dead. Push it, push it, push it, push it. I am, I am. Yes, uh, we have streaks. Yeah, I'm in the We all have there. streaks, bro. We're good. Come to bed. I'm going to come back to help yeah, you. Yeah, baby. We live. Live, baby. What's up, the tank already? There's two. Oh, top scaffold and top tank. Top scaffold is weak. Two of us. One more. Scaffold. Tommy, 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 Tommy. Underwood, underwood, underwood. Underwood, weak. Tommy's in the hill. Nice. One more. Little bit of a Yeah, nice. I'm hitting the other one. I'm hitting the other one. Let's go, Austin. Good shit. Yeah, that time on Trinity. Let's fucking go, baby. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Shit, shit, boys. This kids fucking suck. They fucking suck. <laughs> Yesterday during the LCQ, we saw a team get beat 250 to six, but 250 to 45 against FaZe Clan. That is a ridiculous performance from Envious. Slasher was dominant all throughout that map. You know, getting multiple sets of streaks. You saw the camo play there at the end to put the icing on the cake. We talked a little bit about it before game number four. There's one player on the side of Envy that could really take over a, a game in terms of uh, you know, a retaliation hard point. It would be Slasher in that head-to-head -head matchup between Slasher and Enable. Slasher dominated. Not only that, I felt like you saw Attach beating Zuma in most of those fights, or excuse me, um, Apathy winning those, and he was running the NV4. It's like, how many times do you see three NV4s at times from Team Envious? Everyone was finding success with that gun. On Retaliation, you see a ton of NV4 use. Uh, you just see the versatility of a lot of these players. And I know Cap bounced back with a good game. Got to give him some props after the really rough game number three. There is a look at FaZe Clan. They have taken Envy the distance to a game number five. Envy. They won the hard point. Will they be able to win a second search and destroy? We're about to find out when we return. Don't go anywhere. It's the conclusion of day one of stage two playoffs.
The final game here in winner's bracket round one. Who is moving on to play Luminosity? We have Envy taking the hard point. They forced the game five, and we are going the distance. They'll be search and destroy throwback, the game five here between FaZe Clan and Envious. Can't remember the time. You know, I think I saw Maven tweeted out, actually, that two teams have 100 point clubbed each other into series. Uh, thinking back, I usually have a pretty good memory with this stuff. I can't really remember. Like, I, I, it's something that like I feel like you would kind of know. Like, it would just be such a drastic swing from a game one to game four. Uh, has to be extremely rare. Uh, if we've ever seen it, but jumping right here in the game number five, it'll be Gunless getting bombed down for phase here early. It'll be John though with the sniper rifle able to take him out right behind bomb. So a first opening pick here for Envy. And John got pushed back on that opening push. You saw that's how the bomb got planted. Now he pokes out and gets the kill. Slasher is already behind them. And what a round here from Envious. A clean sweep, all four down. And they're going to give the defuse to Slasher who is working on that Scarab. Slasher picks up two kills in the round. John with a snipe. Envy takes round number one. You got to imagine there's a ton of pressure on this FaZe Clan team. Just, you know, obviously they get through groups. Was not pretty. A lot of people still asking questions, you know, about the roster changes and whatnot, the change of roles. You know, who's the captain of this team? Uh, you know, a whole bunch of stuff going on. You got to imagine there's a ton of pressure on them in this game five. I flip it the other way, Matt. I feel like, FaZe, this is your practice tournament before the big one at the Call of Duty World League Championships. For Envy, you have to prove that you're still relevant, that you're still a threat coming into the biggest tournament of the year. I don't know. A lot of the, a lot of the placings in the event before champs you know, kind of dictates a lot of what you see at champs. I, I think you know, having a good placement here definitely gives the team a lot of confidence going into champs in just a week's time. Yeah. John. That's a face through offense. Takes Enable's head off there. John has started to heat up over the last two maps, and the guy is so talented. The MVP of champs last year opens the round up with a kill for Envy, but you know, it was FaZe that answered right back. John trying to pick one up with a pistol. He's able to pick it up. It'll be Cap, though. The one on one here versus Gunless. Oh, no. Did Cap see him? He is going to get executed trying to jump through the window. And solid defense, a big 1v1, goes in favor of Gunless and FaZe. Yeah, Cap, I think, was just trying to stay alive, get in that top window, wait a few seconds, and then jump on bomb. Gunless with the NV4 spots him as he's going through the window. Cap not able to get in with his life. It'll be FaZe with a win on defense. Now, John has been very effective with the sniper, but you just got to wonder if FaZe is ever going to adjust. Like, if he's going to sit back and just pick people off with the sniper rifle, you got to push him. And you see we jumped on him a quick second there. John is going to run with the E-Rad. So a lot of pressure, most likely, from Envy up the middle of the map. Apathy is going to win the big fight, but attaches there to trade and enable finds cap. It is FaZe with a man advantage. Slasher, no health left. And that is going to be FaZe's round. The crowd here at Columbus loves it. So it'll be two kills from Attach. He will take out Slasher here. Erad versus Envy for a close range. Less attached with a bunch of shots. He was going to win that battle. Pretty sure that was at least three in the round for Attach as well. So keep your eyes on score streaks if Attach is in the feed. And Attach already with his payload ability. So it's five and two this moment in time. And it'll be Envy not trying to go towards mid map yet again. Want to change it up a little bit here. A lot of teams, just, you know, they leave either one or nobody up towards this B site. The bomb will go down. There'll be no contest here from FaZe Clan, but you no know, envy on the defense. What's scary about planning on this site is now you don't know how FaZe is going to go about retaking, right. whether they're going to go all the way on a flank or they're just going to go straight up to the site and attach. He had to have spot these guys in the top window. He's able to get to mid cut with his life, so stays alive for a while, but Phase. They need to enter with some kills. It'll be Zuma with a nice shot there. Taken out. Jcap at range, but the flank coming in. The Erads wow. coming into play. It'll be John, the only one up here for Envy. He gets taken out by Attach. At seven and two. They're going to give the defuse. Oh, no, never mind. They, yeah, they defuse the bomb. They're already on it. Another round win for Phase. And that's a five streak now for Attach. Going big in our previous two rounds. And you saw him checking the corners. He spots the player in window, a second player down low. He jumps out, 
and thinks this must be bait. Where are they? What are they doing over there? Envy, they hole up at blue and they just get steamrolled. Yeah, I don't know how they let Attach get you know, wide open, pretty much from the bottom all the way through that you know, mid cut. And then he comes on a quick flank, I believe, with Zuma. And able to handle the members of Envy with relative ease because, I mean, they get in that close corner. You have the Erads versus the K bars and the Envy force. With how talented Attach and Zuma are at close range, they're going to win those fights. They win the round. Attach tried to surprise John. He FTL jumps into the window using that payload, but there's no challenger inside of food. So he is going to continue to just stay mobile on the map. Meanwhile, your bomb carrier gunless, he's been watching the flank. They still sit in their spawn, looking for an opening engagement. A lot of ERADs out for FaZe. No slashers in this close corner towards the site. It's just how do they try and push him? Hear the Scarab coming in. They're going to get Slasher weak. Needs teammate support looking over him. You see right there for a split second, Cap looks away. He's able to pick up the kill, but it's going to cost Slasher his life. Nice job by Cap to hit the remaining bullets, though. Making sure Zuma doesn't escape. And the bomb, it's now down. Apathy tossing the grenades, get markers. Fight down low is won by Gunless, and Attach is going to find Apathy. So John, last man standing. And FaZe is coming storming back. Attach is still up, I believe. It'll be yep. Attach in the final kill cam here. John just getting shot from you know, multiple directions. Pretty sure this means Attach is fully streaked out. We'll see him in just a moment. But Attach has been incredible over the last three. And he is 50 shy. So he has the Trinity. Each rocket will score him 25 more. We'll see when he decides to pull that out. Attach in a long range ERAD. Fight against Apathy. Both players just peeking each other back and down. John pulls back out the sniper. This is what was working early on. First blood in favor of Envy. They have the four on three advantage. Bomb is now planted safely at A. It was working in terms of getting kills. I mean, they only got the one round on the board though. So you get that first blood. Can you end up closing the rounds out? Now, JCAP's going to pick up Gunless, so two kills. You need to get rid of a, I mean, I was just going to say, you need to get rid of Attach before he earns more streaks, but he's going to have the bombardment in the Trinity. And he saw feet right there. Good attempt by Slasher, who picks up, or John, rather, who picks up one, and then you will see the final shots coming in. Envy, they are surviving, Matt. Going into round seven, a 4-2 game. Envy's not out of this yet, but you have to think, this is FaZe Clan's game to lose. You have a player oh, who is fully streaked out. Payloads are about to be popping left and right. With where the bombs are on this map, streaks are so dominant. I know they're just such an open areas. You know, if you go down towards Bike Path, you're able to you know, hover the Trinity, get it down under inside. And you know, obviously, if you go towards that top side of the map over by you no know, barn, it's just a completely wide open area. So a lot of nice places you can use streaks on this map. So it looks like we're going to see the Trinity come in here for attach. Nothing just yet. Going to call it out for his teammates. Gets one player weak. Slasher going to get taken out by the Trinity. So you get one kill and you get bombed down for that Trinity rocket. It's a great trade there if you're a FaZe Clan. But Apathy is able to win one at JCAP with two big nice. kills. This is such a big round for Envy. You can win this round and you force FaZe to burn a streak here. Would be a massive round win for Envy. Nice aggression from JCap in this round. Challenges two, and he's going to win it. See the defuse coming in for Envious. And this is two straight now. Will they be able to tie up the game? Now it's can you bait out the bombardment with you know, getting the round win, or I believe you got Slasher even working towards some streaks. I think he was getting close towards a Scarab or even keeping him alive, getting him some streaks. And even if you lose the round, you still feel kind of decent about it. But if you can get that bombardment out of the side of face and somehow win that round, then Envy is really back in this one now. And you look now, it'll be Envy on offense. This is where it gets difficult because you have not been successful with aggression up the middle of the map. But with the bombardment, you can't really afford to play slow because then if you go over towards the site they see you, they just bombard you out of it. So. It's a difficult spot for Envy to be playing in. Attached currently at 13 kills. The record is 16 set by Parasite from Evil Geniuses. 
And FaZe Clan may need attach in this round. FTL jump is still available, and he is going to call down these streaks. It looks like bomb planted currently by Cap. So he calls it in. Then he's, he's going to get two. Yep. So uh, a big use of the bombardment there. I mean, FaZe barring a tremendous play from Apathy should win the round. And puts himself in a very good spot. Close the series out. Apathy waiting for his health. Three defenders still up, and he's going to challenge the first here. Gets tagged up, and he will not land a shot before FaZe moves on to game point. You did get them to burn both of the streaks, though. So no, uh, no missiles or bombs to worry about if you're Envy. You just kind of claw your way back into this. And I think the, the big thing, obviously, to look at as, you know, as this game goes on, if it continues to go on, providing FaZe doesn't close out here. So who gets close to what abilities and when? So uh, you do have John, I believe. FTL jump. With his yeah. FTL jump. Uh, you have Attach getting his second FTL jump of the game. Uh, but you have Enable. You no, know, he's your camo player, Slasher, your camo player as well. Both about even. So it doesn't really look like you have any of the major players coming up soon. Potentially Cap with a Centurion. He's going to win that Ooh. first fight against Zuma. Big first blood. Slasher's going to get another kill as well. Envy looking to push this to 5-4. J-Cap survives in a big round from J-Cap. We're going to round 10. Cap winning that 1v1 against Zuma and then outgunning Attach at the close of this round. Here's a look at John though with your round ending kill cam. Catches a weakened enable with the NV4. Let's see how NV decides to play this. You see Slasher getting pretty animated making a play call here. It's, uh, It'll be Envy on offense. Uh, we've seen, like, you know, maybe they try and get a fast plant. I mean, with Cap with the bomb and Centurion, lead you believe he's going to try and get a fast plant and then maybe get the Centurion down. Uh, although we have seen the Centurion used as more of just kind of like a anti-flanking tool. As there the Centurion will go down, most likely for the trophy in case the nades come in. He'll be able to get bombed down. Attach still chasing Parasite's record. Needs just one more kill to tie it. And he might have an opportunity here in the window. Player directly above FTL jumps forward, spots John and gets the execution. Gunless is gonna find Apathy. So it's gonna be just J-Cap and Slasher left alive. They need Cap here. And he will fall. Slasher still up in the 1v1 versus Zuma. Zuma has no idea where Slasher was. Now going to see him. Uh -oh. Needs to push him quick, though. Only 10 seconds left on the clock. Just dance, and he has wasted enough time. Well done by Envy. Well, well, I wonder. So it's great that Envy wins the round, but if Slasher picks up that kill, you have to check it again. He most likely gets camo. And Zuma's pretty weak. I, I, you got to see how close he is here. But now maybe you challenge that, you take out Zuma, but Slasher makes a smart play, plays the clock. Forces the round 11. You have none of Attach's streaks to worry about now. So you see, look at how close Slasher is to the camo. So does not have the camo off the start. Could potentially earn it. And I think he may play a little bit more passive than normal. And as I say that, you see him charging right up to the center. Well, I think he, if he gets a, a quick kill, I think you pop it right away just to stay alive. I think that's the, that's the kind of play you're going for here. And, uh, you know, Attach, we mentioned it. The kill record on this map, 16. He ties it right now. So you see FaZe playing very slow here. Both teams holding their nades as well. I mean, no reason to waste it, right? I mean, as soon as Apathy sees some players, then you kind of start using them, just trying to deter the push. Sees one, but I don't know if I agree with how FaZe is playing this very slow at the end of this round. Oh, oh look, so they bait this out. So you see everybody from Envy going topside because Apathy gets some vision. Now FaZe going to go take advantage. They're going to get the bomb down here at A. Going to force a big rotation here out of Envy. Optic was doing that against Fnatic earlier in the day. Is this one going to pay off for FaZe Clan? John, with the first peak, has FTL to get himself out of it if things go sour. Player number seven, Apathy, now rejoining the rest of the group. They're checking every corner, and John just got a lot of information. The first pick as well. Slasher is there. It's now just two up. Gunless and Zuma left for FaZe. Jcap's going to find Zuma. All oh, Gunless left. And Gunless is going to fall to guess who? It's Slasher. Envy with the comeback. And they are moving on to winner's bracket round two. It's the, the biggest round of that entire SMD is when Attach uses the Trinity Rocket. 
and I believe it was Jacob. He was able to get two or three kills during that round. They're able to win it. You knew the round with the bombardment was not going to end well for Envy, but towards the end, you had a big plays come out of Envy. It was that one round. You, you, if you're going to use the streaks in Search and Destroy, you got to close the round out. It, you know, Attach uses the Trinity. I think they get one kill with it. They're not able to close the round out. Nobody else on phase is really playing that well. I mean, Attach getting so many kills, we talked about how great it was. Nobody else really played that strong. They're not able to get any other payload abilities. Slasher gets a camo there towards the end. And a huge comeback for Envy there, their first series. And they did it in Search and Destroy. They yep. take game two, they take game number five. This is looking like an Envy of old. The question is how far are they gonna go in this tournament? We know they're moving on to winner's bracket round two. And right now we have their captain, Jcap, on the main stage with Maven. Thanks, Chris. Cap, first off, congrats. Big W, crazy series. You come from behind in the game five. First things first, how are you feeling after the victory? Feeling great, you know, that first night we kind of got destroyed. Um, I think our morale was top, but luckily we came back in search, which was our worst game mode at our week, but just won two in that series, so it's feeling good right now. Well, I want to hear about that game one, because you have some players on your team that can tilt sometimes, and when you, I think you were outscored 140 to four or something through the second side of rotations. What was the conversation like, the team, the team chat after that loss? I mean, we just said like the normal stuff after a map loss, like, hey, let's bounce back next map, but there was a lot of small mistakes that we even mentioned after the map, like, hey, we cannot be doing this. Like, we have practiced all the time. These are the little mistakes we always talk about you can't make in matches. Luckily, it didn't hurt us in the big picture in the series, but it was brutal first map. And then games three and four, a series of someone being shut down. You start real slow in the game three, enable gets shut out in the game four. What was going wrong for you early, though, in that uplink? I think one in 12 at one point there, buddy? Uh, I think real slow is a little understatement. I was just, I don't know, I feel like I was in some bad situations, you know, not winning my ones, and uh, just didn't come away at all. And then we got spawn shot, they had streaks, everything was going wrong for us. Well, me especially, my teammates weren't even that bad, but luckily uh, map four, Slasher bounced back and absolutely destroyed. We all played well, but Slasher absolutely destroyed, took over map four, and then just clutched up game five. Let's talk, uh, let's talk game five. You know, you want to ring with Attach. You survive a 16 bomb from him where he completely takes over. How did you manage to survive that and come back? Uh, we just stayed composed. Uh, probably the opposite of what happened in game one and game three. But, uh, you know, we were just like, hey, we win this round, we can still bring this back. We threw away a few rounds kind of early. I lost a 1v1 to Gunless where as soon as I lost, I was like, I played that like an idiot. But, you know, like I said, just stayed composed, did our thing every round and pulled it out. Hey, buddy, you got the victory. Congrats there. Envy moves on. Ben, gentlemen, break it down. Thank you very much, Maven. Great to hear from Jcap. We said it was going to be a close one. Doesn't get much closer than that. Of course, a game five, round 11. What a way to close out day one here at the stage two playoffs. Congratulations to Team Envious, of course, for taking that series three to two. Uh, we'll go ahead and break it down a little bit, but I mean, this is one of the weirdest series that I think anyone's yeah. probably ever seen. It, it starts with FaZe coming out 100-point clubbing team Envious. It was 250 to 97 in map number one, and we were all kind of sitting there going, this could be another 3-0, boys. We, we, yeah. we could be getting out a little early. Uh, Attach just played phenomenal in that first map, Memo. Yeah, I mean, Attach, the whole FaZe kind of team, they were just all over Envy. Um, this most definitely uh, isn't but I mean, other than that, I mean, FaZe and Envy, I just think for for me, FaZe was just, uh, it was outclassing them. It looked like it could be a 3-0 because we know how strong FaZe was, obviously on S and D. Um, but yeah, when we saw the hard point kind of come out that strong, t actually touched on uh, on the map before and when he saw those maps, he kind of said, actually, they could take it, but it sure. wasn't that. True. Wasn't that? Yeah, it it, it okay. definitely wasn't. It, it was 109 to 83 points at the half. The game finishes 250 to 97. 87. Was it 87? Yeah, 87. it was four points. <clears throat> well, four. they got four. You gave them even worse. <laughs> I was gonna, that makes it even worse. You gave them I, 14. How does, got four. how does that happen, Merck? I, I don't know. <laughs> they just lost. Every, uh, to be honest, Envy made a lot of mistakes. I think Jcap yeah. hit it right on the head. A lot of little mistakes that they, you know, they didn't do in there last weekend. Um, basically, they were out-rotating FaZe. They were. But every single time, FaZe would just head to the new hill. You know, Enable picks up a three-piece. We saw a sa uh, attach get two or three. Then they would just break. And it's so hard. Scorch is so punishing if you're spawning out. And they're just losing those gunfights. I mean, just a, a great job by FaZe. I mean, you can see right there clearly how upset Attach is with, with what's just happening in Game 5. Obviously, <laughs> Rightfully so. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a few moments' time. But moving forward, game two, 
Uh, Envy take the search and destroy six to four. And team, it was almost kind of the flip flop of what we expected almost. You, you know, both teams kind of winning the other team's preferred game of. Yeah, it's kind of a weird search and destroy overall. But still, uh, similar things we saw in some of the earlier series today on Breakout. Teams just li letting that spiral side up towards uh, that B bomb open. Yep. The fact that post plant positions aren't being won very often on this map, it, you know, it's towards that shower side, the A bomb, it's expected that's sort of a close quarter gunfight. You know, you don't really know how the trades are going to go down a lot of the time, but. Usually that B bomb's a bit more consistent on those post plants, but regardless, uh, Envy figure it out and pull away. And Envy just seem to thrive in those trading environments. Is that really the key to their search now, do you think, Mark? I think so. I, I think if Envy go back and watch this, the rounds where all four of them t were together, they were out trading phase. You know, similar to Luminosity's playstyle, they just seem to thrive when all of them together. Maybe they were just trying to be a little too fancy in the past with their search and destroy. Even still, we talk about it, Slash really should go on these long, delayed flanks where he tries to make a play and great. Is it, does that work out sometimes? Yeah, absolutely. And he's able to make plays like he did this. He goes 13 and 6. But, you know, it just seems like when all four of them together, when they're getting their trades, they play very well. Yeah, they definitely do indeed. Then, of course, moving over to the uplink, of course, at this point, series tied 1-1. One, one. But the, the uplink, it, it was just dominated by FaZe, for, for lack of a better word, Momo. I mean, it's 7-0 at the half. It finishes 13-4. to a, a beautiful, beautiful game from, from FaZe. Line. Yeah, beautiful game. I mean, it was over by the half. I really felt that way. Uh, Cap, obviously, Cap obviously started like 1-12, and 12, as you can see. Um, his teammates, you know, Slasher, John, they're both positive. Apathy lacking a little bit behind, but that really shows how much of a slaying game uplink is. You got one person or player just not kind of on that same page. You're going to get punished. You're going to get in a very very tough spot and Ubling for me is that one game mode you're nine nil down phase if they wanted could just keep, play keep away they, they, they don't right. even have to go right. for more points but then it gets 11 and oh it, it was again it was just like the hard point simply it, outclass it, it just seemed like there were so many mistakes as well team. I mean how many team kills did we see there from team envy says well you can't let that happen against phase yeah just a giant mess overall they're gonna go and watch that VOD back and just be extremely ex upset with how they started off that one but gunless you know the acquisition for phase on this one he's been one of the best uplink players that we've seen throughout Infinite Warfare, even, you know, back when he was on EU United. So it's not surprising that FaZe is going to be extremely strong in the game type. He takes over with nine nine scores, the best KD on FaZe in that game type. But the fact that all these respawns were this lopsided on either side, uh, how do you predict? Uh, it's, it's hard to analyze a lot of these games because, you know, <laughs> it's like, one game lopsided, and then the other game's a lopsided the other way. I, I mean, th this was absolutely ridiculous. I, I looked away, went to the uh, the fridge, grabbed a bottle of water, looked back, and it was 144 to 11 in favor of Team <laughs> Envy. I mean, it's almost as if Envy said, all right, FaZe, anything you can do, well, we can do a little bit better. So. Welcome to the 50-point club. It, it was insane to watch, Mo. Well, you were just talking today. You're like, when's the last time we right. saw a 100-point club? <laughs> well, you saw two of them today. I, I don't I don't even know. I, I guess, you know, Cap hit it right on the head. Uh, Slasher just, you know, <laughs> got pissed off. You know, he has a 3.71 KD. <laughs> Absurd. This guy's playing pubs on the main stage, man. <laughs> That's absurd stats. That really is. Meanwhile, the best KD on FaZe kind of is 0.82. And I, it's almost as if FaZe just crumbled apart before our eyes. They didn't I, spawn I, in. This box, I, 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 this box score is just sad. Look I, at it. I, 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 how, how does that happen? I mean, it's not as if they were playing bad in the series. You've just come off an uplink where you've dominated. You've played pretty damn flawlessly to, to then get 45 points. Clubbed? Face come, please. That was uh, it, it, brutal. They're not sacrificing time, but then when they would sacrifice time, they would just die off of the rotation. It was just very, very similar to the Scorch. And we would go and rotate. They get three pieced by one player, but Slasher sort of took that role in the retail. Uh, it's just so, weird, man. Very, all, all very strange. About very about strange. It. And then, of course, yeah. Search and Destroy. I mean, this one goes the distance. We, we get ourselves a good old fashioned round 11. And Envy played these first couple rounds absolutely horrible. I mean, there was a few retake situations. They got the bomb down A. It was a 4v4. John gets a snipe. It's a 4v3. They lose it. You can't let that happen. Then they have a 4v4 bomb plant towards B, this round that we're watching right here. And two of the FaZe Clan members flank with 18 seconds left. You only have to watch, you know, watch out for 10 more seconds. You cannot lose rounds like that. It makes no sense. If you go back and watch those VODs, Envy, you have to fix that. Yeah, I agree with Joe. That one round where it was a 4v4 retake, that was 
when I thought it was almost over. Um, then we get to see the streaks from Attach at this current time is 15 and four. We, you know, we, we start to see kind of Envy just kind of crumbling. That bombardment, it works perfectly, pushes them out, picks up the kills. But then these three rounds back to back from Envy, I, I kind of don't know where they came from. I've got to give a lot of credit to Jcap. I think he stepped up in game number uh, four and five. Uh, in these interviews, very modest, kind of giving it to all Slasher. But for me, Cap really stepped it up towards the end of the series. I mean, it was that one round where he won uh, two individual one that round nine. ones, round nine. nine. I mean, uh, that's massive. It basically keeps Envy in the game. Then we get to, to the round 11, and this was almost like watching a game of chess. It, it was so beautifully played. Both teams trying to rotate around. No one wanted to give away that first blood. I mean, mm. I think uh, the bomb goes down, and there's like, what, 35 seconds left and still all eight players are alive, Mark. Yeah, I mean, you saw FaZe, they were they were able to bait out Apathy. As soon as he sort of sees the tip of that head, he thinks, okay, they're going yep. to be bomb site. let's rotate. Well, they all do. FaZe just heads back right away. They hit the bomb down, but Enable, I, I don't know why, but he laid behind Bus. His, he was I didn't wide get open. That. Yeah, I, I didn't get it. it I'm, I'm guessing open. that he thought an angle was maybe covered by a teammate that wasn't. They had a very weird sort of setup. It seemed like they had, I, I believe, two near the bomb uh, as they were waiting for someone to slide through and then enable his back was just wide open. Not too sure why, but man, what a crazy game number five. That's what we expected this series. We didn't know what we were going to get from these teams, but you know, envy, envy clutch. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no, that's still so many questions. Phase yeah. 100 point club envy, envy 100 point club phase. Then we have an uplink which phase dominate uh, a game five round 11 search and destroy it really did have it all it was action-packed way to close out day one but uh, again just to talk a little bit about attaching that game five 16 kills for the well, loss remember that, that i think 16 kills for the loss on that enable had 14 for the loss on the first s d like it is two s and d's where you think if you guarantee <laughs> one of your players to drop 14 or 16 like how do you lose that um and, and you can see how you know it's simple kind of when, when one player is kind of leagues ahead of the others or uh, as it was for, for FaZe there, it, you've got to have those plays on the same page. And when one's dropping two and the other's at 11, it's very, very difficult. And, and the thing to me is throwback s and they were dominating middle map control, right? We talk about it all the time. Attach and Zumo were just getting their way all over middle map. Right. But what it really shows to me, the big picture here, is FaZe's teamwork and that sort of communication aspect, it's still lacking, right? That's why they brought on Gunless. Enable, this is now his team. He has to get them together uh, because you can see Clays are on the United. Their teamwork is impeccable. Uh, I'm not sure where that is right now for FaZe. Yeah, they're definitely not having a, as much success as they would have wanted. Uh, basically, uh, Zuma, the challenges in some of those post-plant positioning, Joe, you touched on it earlier, but that last throwback, it's just situations where they have the complete advantage and multiple FaZe players, but a lot of the time it was Zuma that would just throw his life away. Yeah. You're going to, like, again, we say both these teams are going to go back and watch this series and be like, guys, what was that? Right. It's just a complete mess on yeah. multiple. Yeah, there uh, was that Trinity happen. rocket round where then Zuma goes to the top of the stairs and challenges Apathy in a 1v1. Apathy wins it. Like, there's no point. You you have a 4v3 situation. Right. You just sit back, wait for Enable. He's on the back bus to say, all right, they're on bomb. Just a lot of mistakes. Well, we can take a look now at our winner's bracket and see, well, exactly how those results mean or what they mean, I should say, of course, of so the top side, Team Envious will take on Luminosity. On the bottom side, E United face Optic Gaming. And, I mean, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about both these series briefly. I mean, Team Envy versus LG, you have to think, if Envy starts slow like that in any of those respawns, Steve, they're, they're dead. That, that, that series is over. Yeah, I, I, I guess Envy's hoping they get another retail, <laughs> I guess, in that map set. <laughs> I'm not sure what it's going to be for round two. But, yeah, overall, everything just needs to sort of come together a bit better. LG seems to be rolling on all cylinders, honestly. But... Splice looked kind of weak in that first sort of matchup that they had versus True. LG. I, I don't really know how to gauge this Envy team after nah, that series. Either. It's just, uh, it's all over the place. It's a roller coaster. Yeah, it's uh, definitely interesting. Then, uh, then, of course, the other matchup that we get to see, of course, United versus Optic Gaming, Clay against the yeah. Green Wall. We're all excited for that one. I mean, how do you actually see that one starting to, to develop a, a little bit, Merc? I mean, if you look at the United today, uh, you know, ton of potential. Again, you know, that teamwork was, was great. Optic, they showed some weaknesses again in Hardpoint. They did start off slow where they were able to bring that back uh, to me it just comes down to the search and destroys you know I, I i can see that going to a game number five and i i just don't know how to predict that one we're gonna see how good this e united roster is it's gonna come down to me to like players like pristini and silly yeah they definitely need to step up i mean silly I, I was laughing earlier on saying he seems to start off one and four in every hard point i've seen over the past couple of weeks yes <laughs> cannot yeah. start slow against a team like optic gaming it definitely can punish you uh, but now we'll take a look at our losers bracket and we'll see, of course, the teams that lost today, they are not out in stage two playoffs, but 
Uh, boy, oh boy, do they have to make a run. Face Clan draws the stage one channel. Wow. Splice loses round one. And on the bottom side, Enigma 6 versus Fnatic. To be honest, I'm okay with that. Like, it's not like Splice looked that great. Sure. I mean, I... <laughs> I mean, I don't know. The if face looks that fees, good, though. That, that, that's sure. that's the that's the question. Yeah, in, in, in hardpoint, in uplink at times. Obviously, not hardpoint retaliation, but you know, Enigma Six Fnatic, Enigma Six, they could, you know, they can go on and run in losers bracket if they're able to beat that Fnatic roster. I mean, stage one playoffs, it was all you know, me waving the EU flag, right? Uh, this could be the complete opposite. We could have a seventh, eighth position for two EU teams. Uh, Fnatic, I don't think that's unexpected. You know, everyone kind of looked at Fnatic and right, thought they're right. probably the, be the eighth best team here. Uh, Splice, I think, have got a very, very tough. tough Ask, obviously go up against phase uh, I, I don't know how to call that splice phase game I just don't know how they're gonna match up head-to-head -head now I mean it's, it's a little crazy right we, we have a team mm. that was stage one champions they, they go to Anaheim of course they, they finish second they make it to the grand final to now all of a sudden be in losers round one with a very real possibility because you're going up against phase and finish seventh eighth how does that happen, Teep, in such a short space of time? Uh, I don't know what to really attribute it to. Is it the practice? Is it the mindset that they have? I guess I'm going to go and say that them missing Sheffield was one of the worst decisions you could pro pro possibly make. When you're on a roll like that, and Joe can probably speak to this as well, when you're at the top, you do not stop. You right. play more than ever. And I always thought after you've won, it's easier to win again because you have that momentum. You have that sort of mental, uh, I, I guess, pillar over these other teams. Right. And the fact that you just take a break, you come back and just something seems off and breaks just never work. Yeah. Well, Simple as that. Well, yeah, I, I think the biggest thing is, is when you win, you trust one another, right? If, if Mad Cat makes a call, you listen to it because you know what? We won when he did that last time and it, you just trust, have that trust. And maybe in that time span, that trust is gone away i don't know what again when their week was here they just didn't seem in it they, they were very mentally weak i mean again they went three and three the only reason they're here is because they went two and over oh red reserve uh they could have potentially not been in the playoffs. Yeah, I think for Splice as well, talking about a team, when you get on a roll, you get that fear factor almost. You know, you're right. back to up to game in the complexities. Right, right, right. They, they win three back to back. Say they, they take, you know, the playoffs, then they take Sheffield, then they get second at Anaheim. It's like, okay, these are a real contender. LG kind of went into that. I don't think they were scared at all of them. Not that they should be. They're probably the best team in the world. But if they drew someone else, I, I don't think that Splice have that fear factor yet about them. You know, they've not won enough. And I even said after stage one playoffs, Splice, great, they've won it, but that doesn't prove that they are the best and that's why i always said that you know for me they are still kind of that top four team until they consistently win right right we can't really could say that but definitely still in it splice they could turn it around tomorrow definitely gonna look for them to do exactly that memo get a, a little bit better performance we'll take a look at tomorrow's schedule we actually kick off the day with splice versus phase uh, and then following that immediately, Enigma 6 versus Fnatic. So we could see both European teams <laughs> at Stage 2 playoffs eliminated by 4 p.m. tomorrow, which would be uh, a little crazy. Then, of course, we do get to winners round two. We have EU United versus Optic Gaming. And then to follow that, Luminosity versus Team Envious. At that point in the day, of course, we will know our winners bracket final. And then to close out the day, we have two losers round matchups at 7 and 8.30 p.m. But that concludes a fantastic day one of the Stage 2 playoffs of the Call of Duty Global Pro League presented by PlayStation 4. Congratulations, of course, to E United, Optic Gaming, Luminosity Gaming, and Team Envious for progressing into the Winner's Bracket semi-finals, where, of course, we'll see them compete tomorrow afternoon. Speaking of tomorrow, we'll be back at 1 p.m. Eastern as our eight teams fight to be crowned our Stage 2 champions.